Hi everyone and welcome to another Family Art Project Friday. I'm Autumn, the Education Coordinator here for Studio 23. Uh, if you got to see our segment with Val earlier, you know that we're talking about the art of Sharon Burke and Dent. Uh, Sharon is uh, made mostly a 2D artist. She does these beautiful, beautiful um, graphite drawings. If you saw with Val earlier, you saw a few of the examples that we have. Um, and of course, some of the, um, or excuse me, of course, it's one of the examples that we have in the art around the city. So it looks like it's going to be a beautiful sunny day. If you have a chance, get out and check out some of the artwork, including Sharon's art. Um, Sharon is also a jewelry artist, as Vale talked about. And um, when, you, when we look at her examples, we see that um, she's got a much more realistic style, uh, very, very detail-oriented. She tends to focus a lot on nature and animals and even fantasy themes. Uh, there are some examples um, that I've seen of her work where she focuses a lot on fairies. And I, I think Val might have shown a couple of those as well. So um, I thought it would be fun to do a project inspired by Sharon's work that was also fairy themed. So we are gonna work on have this fun little project here and I'll get it a little closer. We're gonna do a mixed media family project that's fairies. Now you'll notice one big difference between Sharon's fairies and our fairies today is that our fairies are not very detail oriented in their um, they're very stylized. So stylized if you're um, looking to explain that to your younger students. Stylized is really just um, simplifying your line or your shape or your form of an object or a figure, or a figure, um, but it's still gonna be recognizable. So if you look, you know, it's very simplified. There's not even a face on my fairies, but you can see the arms and the legs and the wings, and you know that it's supposed to be a fairy. And this is great for younger students because then they don't get really frustrated if it doesn't look exactly what maybe they think it should look like. If something's more stylized, it's, it's a lot easier for them to just go for it and create something, right? Because they'll know, well, it generally looks like a fairy. So uh, to create this, you're gonna want some kind of paper or cardstock to put it on for the background. Uh, I used watercolor paints. I also used some construction paper for the wings. And then I used some found object for the, um, for the little outfits that our fairies are wearing. Now I used some feathers. Let's see, I used just some regular old feathers that you can get from the craft store. Uh, I use some foam stickers. These are also something you can get easily. At, I, think, I think you can even get these from the dollar store. So these are fun to use. Um, ribbon, I have some ribbon laying around. If you have some fabric laying around, you can use that as well. I have a bunch of um, threads and uh, yarn and things of that nature in this bag, so I use that. Um, but don't be afraid to think outside of the box as well. For this one in particular, I use these little um, uh, leaves off of a fake flower. It, you know, and I just figured out a skirt. Go for it. Think outside of the box. That makes it so fun. Or encourage your student to think outside of the box. Um, I have this moss. We always keep this dollar store moss around, and I thought, well, this would make a really fun skirt as well, right? So just stuff like that to consider. Um, and then otherwise you'll just want some kind of heavier paper, like I used a cardstock to create my, my little um, characters, some scissors, um, and maybe even like some kind of old magazine that you could cut up too. That's something you could definitely use for their clothing as well. So maybe a good idea would be to go on a little supply hunt before you get started. That would be fun to do. All right, so that I think is it for all the supplies. Let's go ahead and get started. This way, 
see so everybody can see what I'm doing. There we go. All right. So we got our project right here, our example. So what I did to start with is I just created a little stylized shape, little like a person shape. This was the little shape that I initially created. See, it's definitely not perfect. You know, it might not be exactly, but you can tell it's a person. So, and I just, you could easily trace that out. Um, if you had something to trace around, I mean, you could do that. Or you could just easily draw it out and you're just gonna, let's see if I can do this actually, so you can see, here we go. So you're gonna do an arm shape. And see, I'm not even doing the hand. I'm really just doing, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm really just doing kind of points at the end, right? I'm not even gonna worry about the hand. This is not gonna be perfect and it's not supposed to be. That is my intention. All right, some legs, a head. And I gave her, I gave her a big hairdo and she kind of looks like, I don't know, it's bordering on Marge Simpson hair, but I thought it was cute to give her a big bun. So something just really simple like this does not have to be perfect and you're gonna be in good shape and ready to go, okay? So once you have that done, your next step is gonna be to cut it out and simply cutting right along our lines. I have one here that I started, all right? We're gonna cut this out. and be left with this really cool sort of, you know, stylized human shape, right? We're definitely gonna be able to tell it's a person when we're done here. All right. So there I go, I have my shape all nice and cut out. I'm good to, ready to move on to the next step. All right, next step is going to be to paint it with the watercolor. So let's see, I got my watercolor. I just wanna make sure everyone can see here. I got my watercolor. I just use my regular old Crayola. They're inexpensive, but they work great, great color. Got my water, got my brush, and I'm just gonna start going for it. So first I'm gonna do some little slippers on the bottom, and then you can see on my example, they almost have like a ballet slipper style, you know? And your student obviously can do it any way they want, but it's pretty easy. You're just gonna go in, and let's see. Uh, we'll do, I don't know, we'll do yellow. How about yellow? And I'm gonna go in, and I'm really gonna saturate that paint so it's nice and vibrant. And I'm gonna just kind of almost trace along the foot. It's almost like a little J shape. Same thing on the other side. To get that, that little like, bat, almost like a ballet flat shape. All right, let that dry a little bit. And we'll move on to the hair next. And you can see on my example, some of them have normal colored hair, like you know, yellow, something that would be more natural, right? More closer to blonde, but some of them have blue and purple. And I think this is a fun time where you can really just go for it because they're supposed to be fairies. And you know, who knows what color hair fairies have, right? So let's see, I think I'll go for it. I'll, we'll do, um, we'll do purple. That sounds good, we'll do purple. And I'm gonna just load up my brush with my paint and Actually, I'm gonna do a make it a little watery because I don't want it to be really dark purple. I want it to be a nice light purple color. So let's do that. So I'll go and I'll, I'll paint the top, the, like the, the hair bun up here. And then I'm gonna kind of start at the neck and paint it like, I know there's an ear right here, right? So in my mind, I'm just gonna be like, okay, there's an ear right here that I want the hair to go around. I'm just gonna kind of paint it like that. So see, this fairy kind of has her head turned to the side. There we go. And I will bring that closer so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Just like that. See, she's looking off to the side. And we'll let that dry a little bit. And then for the skin tone, 
Um, again, you could absolutely make this any skin tone you wanted. Um, you could make it some far off color like green or yellow or anything, or you can make an actual skin tone. If you're looking for a lighter skin tone, um, I would probably mix like orange with a lot of water, maybe a little bit of yellow, maybe a tiny bit of red, but you really want a lot of water if you're getting a, a lighter skin tone. If you're looking for a darker skin tone, I might start with the brown and water it down and go from there. Um, that's kind of what I did here. I did kind of a medium skin tone here. Now you really just have brown. Let's see, I'll add a little bit of yellow to it and we'll see what we get. Oh, it's mixing with the blue. So it might be a little, let's see, it might be a little different, but I think that's okay. It's a fairy, so who knows, right? All right, so I'm just gonna go in, try to paint around my slipper the best I can. And some of the, some of my skin tone might blend with my yellow slipper and that's okay. It, it really is not gonna do anything terrible, not with this project. And I'm just gonna keep going in and painting my skin tone on my fairy. And you'll see that the watercolor, it, when it blends, it really does some cool things. So that might even be something you like. You might end up saying, oh, you know, that looks really good. Especially up top when it, like the colors will blend together. So let's say um, my brown blends with my purple hair a bit. That might look kind of cool. You never know, right? So experiment a little, you know, encourage your student to experiment a little. Sometimes these mistakes you get really just the coolest results. And if they really don't want it to blend together, just have them wait for the hair and the shoes to dry first and you, then you should be in good and shape. Um, so here is, they're painted, my fairy's ready to go. This one I'm gonna let dry. We'll move on to my painted one that's already dry. All right, she's dry and she's ready to go. We're gonna find her an outfit and um, we're gonna make her some wings. So to make her an outfit, I think we'll start with, um, let's see. I think I will use for her top, I think I'll use one of these foam pieces. These are really fun. So I'm just gonna fit this up top where I think approximately where I think a, a top would go on a fairy, right? Um, and then I'm gonna cut on the back side so, you, um, so it looks like it's form fitting and I'll show you exactly what I mean grab my scissors let's see I want it to start right about at where the armpits are because that'll make it fit that much better and I'm just gonna flip it over so I can see and cut that off and same thing on the other side all right so super easy, just like that. And then the great thing about these foam pieces is that they're self-sticking. So that makes it even easier for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that right on. All right, there we go. So our fairy has a top, right? So that's pretty cool. And so now I think for the, um, for the bottom, I think I'm gonna use some of this moss. Now for something like this, you may have to use, um, actual glue like from a bottle the, the little messier kind I don't have that with me right now I just have the glue stick so we're just gonna go for it but I think if I put a lot of it on I think a good amount should still stick so that's something to keep in mind too if you only have glue sticks and you want to use something pretty big and bulky just really load it up with glue first and then you'll probably get it to stick and I'm even getting some on the foam piece and that's perfectly fine because I really just want it to stick so look how heavy I went with that glue, right? You can see down there in the bottom, all that purple. So I went pretty heavy with it. And then I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna just kind of squish it down and go for it. All right, do a little more. We don't need too much. There we go. I like that. That's super cool. I think that's, uh, I, I love the unexpected, the little unconventional things that really turn out cool. So 
you can see right here, look at that sun. Um, she's got this cute little skirt made out of moss, right? Which, I mean, who knows? You might see a fairy wear that, right? So there's that. And then lastly, she needs wings. Um, but before we do that, I think what we'll actually do is we need some kind of background to put it on. Now, you don't have to have a background. You could just put them on your, I don't know, attach them to your wall. You could really attach them anywhere, right? But I think I want it to have a background. So all I did was, I, again, I used a stylized version of a sky, right? So it's just kind of an implied sky. I have some orange, I have some red, I have some purple. The idea of some clouds that I've left white intentionally. So um, you could really easily just go in and I'm just gonna get some paper, my paper wet a little bit. And then I'm gonna just go in with my colors. And see, I'm really just going for it and I'm not being careful. <laughs> so, you know, the kids will have fun with it, right? If they don't have to be careful. And I'm just gonna kind of scribble it in because it, it's just the, it, I'm just implying that it's the sky, right? There's nothing that definitely says, oh, that's the sky. And I'll put a little more water down and then I'll go in with my red under that. Ooh, and that'll blend with the orange nicely. All right. Put a little more water down. All right. And then I'll go in with some purple. And that'll blend nicely with my red. And if you watch my videos, you know that I really, I prefer to not have a blue sky because we always just say, oh, what color is the sky? It's blue. And if you've watched my videos, you know I say it all the time. The sky is many, many colors. It doesn't have to just be blue, right? All right, so that's good enough for me for a background. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. And then we're gonna go for some wings. And I'm just using some regular old construction paper. Let's see, I don't know what color wings will do for her. Maybe, maybe light blue, that sounds good. So for the wings, you really just want this. I mean, I don't know what you'd call this shape. To me, it almost looks like, I don't know, a chromosome or something, but it's like an X shape, I guess, is how you could describe it. And if you want the wings to be um, symmetrical, remember, we just fold our paper right down the middle lengthwise. If you needed to, your student could draw half of it on this side, right? So let me grab my pencil. If they needed to, they could just go. Just like that. So they had an idea of what they were cutting or they can just go for it too. And when it's folded in half, remember, you just wanna cut out half of the shape you're going for because you're gonna create that symmetry by having it folded, right? All right. So, got our wings, there we go. And I think these are good enough fairy wings for right now. So then what you would do lastly is once your paper is dry, you would take your glue, get those wings down, and then a little more glue on top of that and get your fairy down. So that is my stylized fairy project. This is a super fun project for the kids. Um, have them give it a try today. You know, not doesn't take a lot of materials. Um, this might be even a project for you to all to work on, work on together. It's, you know, it's, it was actually really fun to create. So that's it for me today. Uh, up next, we have Val. Val's gonna be doing a project also. It's, uh, it's an awesome project. I, I'm excited for you guys to see it. And um, we'll see you next week. I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend. Bye.